St Kilda lies 40 miles off the coast of North Uist in the Scottish Outer Hebrides, one of the westernmost points of the United Kingdom. It is home to around a million seabirds, hundreds of feral sheep, and for at least 2,000 years was home to a hardy folk who eked out a living on this jagged collection of rocks. So a sheep live their lives on grassy slopes across the main island of Herta, including those that are improbably steep and above the precipitous drops and overhangs that characterise the harsh, weather-beaten landscape. Village Bay is where the majority of the human history remains most visible and intact following the evacuation of the inhabitants in 1930. Hundreds of stone structures, cleats, dot the landscape, often matching the sheep in the lunacy of their locations. The St Kildans would have clambered down the steep slopes and cliffs, hunting birds and their eggs. The cleats were used to store and dry birds and fish, as well as being used for general storage. <coughs> Soe sheep are a small prehistoric sheep, named for the small western island of Soe, the island of sheep, from which they were brought to Herta in the 1930s. They have been the subject of scientific study since the 1950s, investigating the population dynamics and evolution. The village may lie empty of people, but there's certainly still the hubbub of various birds, foremost amongst other chatty starlings. It is an eerie place to walk through though, and incredible to imagine how hard living in an environment such as this must have been. The gap between the hills Conacher and Osherville gives way to a huge and sudden drop. Fulmers are certainly one of the most prevalent species on Herta, making their nests on cliff edges, steep grassy slopes, and in amongst the many stone structures. Waves crash far below. Dune is a dramatic island lying just to the south of Herta. At one time they would have been linked, but the sea broke through long ago. The slopes of the island are home to thousands of fulmers and puffins. Fulmers are members of the tube nose family. It is from the distinctive tubes atop their beaks that they excrete salt that would otherwise build up on their bodies. On top of this, they also produce an oil in their stomach that can actually be used for various conventional oil purposes. They are relatives of the albatross and can cruise huge distances in search of food. They were once a staple food for the islanders, who also harvested their oil and feathers to sell. Today, fulmers and all wild birds and their eggs in the UK are afforded protection by the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981. St Kilda is host to one of the largest northern gannet gannet trees in the world with close to a quarter of the population nesting on Stack Lee, some four miles north of Herta. These huge birds with wingspans of up to two metres make it look effortless as they glide at great pace across the rough North Atlantic. The enormous stack, Stack Lee, near Boroughray, calls them home. Many tens of thousands of puffin call St Kilda home during the breeding season. The sight of so many puffins is awe-inspiring. The sky is full of the fast wingbeat of the puffins, often a little uncoordinated in their solo flight, but together they are rather graceful in their thousands. 
Commonly called clowns of the sea, these little birds are curious and definitely rather comedic in their clumsy manoeuvring. The puffin's jaw structure in combination with spines on the roof of its mouth enable it to carry many fish at once, such as sand eel. This enables it to forage for longer and also means that it does not have to regurgitate its food to its young. Carnmore is one of the largest colonies on the islands, with a large boulder field providing many nooks and crannies for nests. Absolutely one of my favourite birds. St Kilda has a number of tunnels and arches, but this one is often just called the tunnel. Accessed by a fortuitous rocky shelf, this cavernous tunnel offers a glimpse of the Isle of Borrowe beyond. Basking sharks are not infrequently seen off the coast of the Hebrides. These large creatures are filter feeders, opening wide and eating minuscule matter such as zooplankton. Their dorsal fins can stand well clear of the water, with the significant swish of their tail powering them through the waves. The second largest of the living shark species, the large shark here was over 7 metres long. while this juvenile was still estimated to be over three metres. Great skewers are often referred to in the Highlands and Islands as bonksies, for one very good reason. They dive bomb with great ferocity as they defend their territories and nest sites. Keen hunters, they will take a puff in mid-air if they get the chance. Arctic skewers are somewhat smaller and sleeker, but still well capable of dive bombing. This skewer is getting a good bath and shower at the same time as the wind whips up. Being out in the North Atlantic, St Kilda takes a beating from the sea. Relative refuge can sometimes be found in Village Bay, but the waves can still be impressive. The gap between Dune and Herta provides a glimpse of the wildness beyond.
storms of autumn wash away the thin strip of sand that forms in summer, leaving hard rocks for the waves to crash into. It can be a tough place to catch a nap. Snedge, the snowy owl, has been a resident on St Kilda since at least 2018. She can often be found in amongst the rocks of the scree slopes on Conoco throughout the day. It doesn't snow much on St Kilda, owing to the warmth from the jet stream and the sea, but Snedge can certainly hide when she wants to, despite her bright plumage and substantial size. And Snedge certainly seems to be well fed, thanks to a diet of St Kildan field mouse, a subspecies of mouse endemic to the islands. Night falls, the breeze blows gently, the waves not so loud for once, the moon slowly rises, all quiet. 